So guys, as I walk you through this project, I'll walk you through the steps. Um, you know, obviously one of the first steps is you gotta come up with a design, uh, and we'll help you with that with a, our free design consultations, which you can get by just emailing some pictures to cal at lightingdoctor.ca. We'll have a look at your property and come up with a plan of how many lights you need uh, and help you size your transformer and everything. I'm not gonna go into too much of the transformer today. If you wanna learn more about how to size it properly, Go to YouTube, search Lighting Doctor, how to size your transformer. Um, there's a whole bunch of videos explaining that, but once you've got your lights selected, the transformer is one of the next steps that you have to figure out. You need to figure out how big a transformer you're gonna need. And on a project like this, we've only got about 14 lights or so. We're running about uh, 90 watts, which uh, in this case, we've got a 150 watt transformer. So we've got plenty of uh, plenty of room on this for future expansion. You always wanna make sure that whatever size transformer that you're using, it's 20% more than the actual wattage of the lights that you're putting in. Um, because not all r lights run at the same efficiency, meaning, Although it might say it's a five watt light, sometimes it might use seven, eight, nine, even sometimes 10 lights. The cheaper the light, generally the less efficient it is and the more wattage it actually uses than what's on the box. And that's where you can kind of run into some voltage uh, drop issues and things like that. And same thing, if you've got questions about voltage drop, uh, just go to YouTube, uh, Lighting Doctor, Voltage Drop. Um, I've got a, a really good example of that. Or you can go to, uh, you can search for uh, how to uh, how to wire with a wiring diagram and you'll also find a really good one where I talk about voltage drop but once you've got that selected they're really easy and there's not much to them um, any good uh, stainless steel transformer is going to have a couple taps sometimes you'll have a multiple tap transformer where you have uh, one tap is for common wire one is for usually like 15 volt 13 volt and 14 volt those were a lot more relevant when you were uh, putting in halogen systems now with LED worry about that as much if you're ever in question uh, use the largest tap use the 15 volt tap because that means you're gonna start with the most power and you can lose more down the line and still get those lights to work properly another question I get all the time about transformers is if I've got so for this example we're basically just daisy chaining all the lights we've got them starting from here and we're just going in sequence around the whole property uh, and putting them all sequentially but sometimes you might have a, a load of lights that way and a load of lights that way and you don't want to have to run wire all the way around the property so can you run more than uh, one set of wires out of this and yes you can generally the terminals and any of the bigger transformers is going to be large enough that you can put two sets in here so you can have wires running out to one direction and wires running out to the other direction and as long as the wattage still meets up uh, to fit your transformer so again if you have 100 watts of lights and you have a 150 watt transformer well then you're well under that and by going and running a line out this way and running a line out that way you also reduce your chances of voltage drop because now if you're just putting 50 watts on that line and 50 watts on that line you can run more wire and lose less voltage along those lines so again if you're ever in question uh, feel free to split that line but a general rule of thumb you can usually put 100 watts on a 12-2 wire up to 250 feet out without really running into any voltage drop issues as long as you're starting with a 15 volt tap. in so basically you know our first step was we uh, we took a design and we went and chose all our lights what was cool about this one is uh, you know this is a client who actually had um, emailed in pictures for a free consultation and because it was on Vancouver Island we were able to do it so uh, we looked through all the pictures we gave him some recommendations uh, and then we gave him a price to actually install it which is not always the case because some of you guys are, are far away I wish we could but we just can't but um, what was cool is then we got on site and a lot of what we had determined from the pictures were very accurate so we already had a pretty good idea of what we were going to do how many lights and we're able to size the transformers beforehand but sometimes and as often the case we get on site and there's some things we want to add or some things we want to take away so um, so that's how we go and 
then determine our transformer. So we'll always try and, and determine that based on a design. Um, but the key is just leave it a little bit bigger if you're not sure because you always want to make sure you have enough room. And if you're using an LED system, um, it's not as crucial that you get it uh, the exact transformer as when you had a halogen system. With a halogen system, you had transformers that had multiple taps and you really had to be careful that you were getting the right voltage to the right lamps or you were just gonna burn them out a lot quicker. But if you're, uh, if you're getting an LED system, a lot of times you'll see on the box, it'll say that your LED is usually rated from 9 volts all the way to 15 volts, which means it's gonna operate within that range, whereas halogens was usually between 11 and 12, so you really had to do your math. Um, with LED, that eliminates a lot of that. So a general rule of thumb, and if, you're, if you have more questions about sizing your transformer and voltage drop and all that, Go to YouTube and just search Lighting Doctor Voltage Drop. There's a video where I go into a lot of detail and show you the chart and everything. Uh, but general rule of thumb, uh, on 300 feet of wire, you can put up to 100 watts and not really have any voltage drop issues as long as you're using a larger transformer like this that has a 15 volt tap, which means you're starting at 15 volts and all the way down the line you might get down to 10 volts, but that's still going to run that light and it's still going to be as bright as it should because that bulb is rated from 9 to 15 volts. Again, assuming it's a, it's a good one. Um, that's why we always say not all products are created equal. So you have to do some due diligence there. Uh, we do a lot of that uh, in our kits, but um, just, just buyer beware. Um, so basically, it's really simple to go and size your transformers. You take all your lights, you add up all the water of all the lights. So if you have a bunch of five watt up lights and you've got um, let's call it 20 of them. Well, that uh, that comes out to 100 watts. But you want to size that transformer a little bit larger because depending on the efficiency of that bulb, uh, the more efficient it is, the closer that that actual wattage is going to be to, to 5 watts. But the less the least efficient or the lesser efficient bulbs are going to sometimes be almost 10 watts, even though the box says 10 watts. That's something called their their actual. It's called their VA, their actual wattage. Um, so you got to be careful about that. That's why I always say size it a little bit more. But general rule of thumb, add up all your lights, um, add up all your lights, and then size your transformer 20, 30, 40 percent more than that. Uh, if you don't want to have to worry about voltage drop, get a good transformer that has a 15 volt tap, and you can run 100 watts on 300 feet of line without running into that issue of uh, losing any brightness at the end of the line. But that's basically it when it comes to the only other thing I was going to mention is the timer options. Now, um, you know, you see a lot of the dinosaur looking um, timers where it's this little digital or this little um, analog wheel that you got all these little tabs you got to stick out. They got these, um, these different digital timers that you got to be a rocket science to operate. The nice thing is that a transformer like this, um, we use one of these. It's from, uh, it's from Wyon, it's a Wi Fi timer. So basically, there's there's dozens of these on the market, and if you have a smartphone system, have a look if they already have an outdoor plug, because that's all this is. It's basically a Wi-Fi plug for your outdoors, and all you have to do is now, when you go plug this transformer into your GFCI receptacle, um, all you're gonna do is you're gonna flip this into the on position. So you're just gonna leave your transformer in all the time. But this little thing here, where usually you would have a photocell, which again, I highly recommend against, because photocells just fail all the time you have to have your transformer in the right position because it's in a dark shaded position your lights are going to be on all the time so all those kinds of things but i have to get back to it basically where it says to plug in your timer your photo cell or whatever all you have to do is unplug that plug in your your wi-fi plug whether that be this one or whether that be one uh, based on the smart home system you have Go on. plug it into there and then plug this guy into into your, um, your plug-in and then you just close that up, leave it in the on position and then you can go and operate everything from your Wi-Fi plug. And usually most of these, you don't need a hub anymore. Um, they have their own app so you can just go download it. It usually walks you through how to do that in two or three steps and all of a sudden now you have a, a Wi-Fi landscape lighting system but you haven't paid tons and tons of money for it. Another thing that we do a lot of times, if, because I get asked all the time, well, in my front yard, in my backyard, I want to be able to zone them different so I can turn them on at different times, kind of like a sprinkler system. 
there, there is some really good systems that are out there that do that. Um, they tend to be quite costly. They're great systems, but it depends on your budget. If you don't want to do that and spend that kind of money on a system, just go and use a separate transformer. You know, in this case, on this project, that's what we're doing. We've got one of these for the backyard and one for the front. Luckily, because we have this timer, we can run both those controllers on the exact same app and set them up with totally different schedules. Which is what's cool about going and adding something like this to your transformers. And it doesn't have to be this one. It can be basically any outdoor Wi-Fi plug. And you can plug into here, it's gonna work. So make your life a lot easier. Turn your transformer into a Wi-Fi system. Go and size it properly. Be safe. Build it. Um, select it larger in case you want to add on down the road too. So hopefully that helps answer your transformer questions. But like I said, if you need more definition on voltage drop and stuff go to uh, YouTube and search uh, voltage drop lighting doctor and I guarantee you'll find